up YouTube, it's Colin with another Logic Pro X tutorial. And today I'm going to be talking about two things that I wanted to combine to one video so that we don't waste a lot of time. It's going to be the envelope followers in Alchemy in the modulation section and the mod map. So with those two things, we're going to close the modulation section and then pass on to the performance section actually which is good because that means or that signifies the beginning of the end as I would call it for this huge alchemy tutorial series that I want to thank all of you once again for uh, supporting and watching and doing all that good stuff okay so before I start as usual this is one of my f the f first videos that you see in my channel make sure that you subscribe to keep up to date with everything that I release and if you want to see more of my work you can contact me everywhere that appears there in that, that little graphic at the bottom of the video let's go into the logic pro x window so this is the uh we're gonna go with the envelope followers first so the envelope follower modulator it's a true envelope follower that follows the amplitude or volume level of the selected modulation source so that's why it's called a follower because it follows that amplitude of the modulation source that we select and as you know we can select from pretty much all of these knobs um, as modulation sources you have eight envelope modulation sources and this can be accessed from the modulation rack we don't have any tabs uh, for it um, the amplitude is tapped at several points in the signal flow so each source each master file and pre and post effects there's no control panel as i said so to set an envelope follower in the modulation rack what you're gonna do as usual you can either do on and off here doesn't matter you're gonna click and then you're gonna go down the list to envelope follower from the pop-up menu then you're gonna choose one of the following options from the sub menu and this is pretty much a tutorial. I'm just gonna read um, real quickly what this do. So sources A through D, what they're gonna do is just set an envelope for your sources A, B, C, or D. Pretty simple. Filters one and two, you can place a filter, an envelope for your filters one and two, which are your main filters up here, one and two. And then for your master pre-effects, and post effects what that does is that the main envelope can be set before the effects section or after the effects section which are also placed here in the main filter area so we have discussed before so that's all you need to know about the envelope followers pretty much and now i'm gonna talk about the mod map so to to start closing up this uh tutorial where i you know try to combine two topics that i thought were shorter right the mod map is not really a modulator in itself but its purpose is to process the output of a modulator it does this by mapping the original values to new ones before they're applied to a modulation target they also let you create curved velocities scale the volume of each source across the keyword among other things which i'm not really going to go into because you can experiment and find out by yourself and it's all as, as usual dependent on what your source is how you are synthesizing it how you import it if it's a sample all that good stuff mapping is defined by the graphical shape of the mod map and right now there's only this straight line going up but i'm gonna get to that in a minute and that graphical shape in the mod map represents a transfer function the x the x value is going to represent the range of the original modulation values from one from zero to one sorry and then the y is the range of the mapped modulation values to see how a modulation value is affected by the mod map you have to look at x versus y so a convex shape mod map 
it's going to be mapping the mid range inputs to to values higher than the default output so convex um, imagine a convex shape here like a curve going like that like a vel it's pretty much what i just said and the concave would be the opposite so you will have something more like like that so it's going to do the opposite of the convex a flat mod map uh, maps a range to a single output so you don't have really a y value there a stepped mod map is going to quantize the input map it into an output value defined by one of the steps now with all that notes uh, covered this is going to the actual parameters so the first thing is that curve mod map pop-up same thing if you only have one by default you can add up to 16 i only have one right now but let me just set a something for source c and give it a little bit of less depth and if i set something else let me see for say filter two uh so that's my my one and it can scroll left and right with the buttons and create additional ones so then moving down the file button that's just gonna do the same functions that we have seen before with all the other ones you have a, a bunch of presets that you can set which i'm not gonna go through you can save copy paste or clear your mod map settings of course if you save them you're gonna have them available in your presets if you copy you can copy the current snapshot paste it to a second one if you had a second one and so on and so forth then the last two parameters here you have a snap on or a snap x i should say pop up similar to other snap functions that we have seen in the modulation section doesn't change that much but for those that are not up to speed this what this does is quantizes the original point values and limits them to the exact fractions of the available range these fractions are like steps so you, you go in increments of one whatever one one half one third one fourth until you get a step of one the um, key mode changes the mod map displayed to a keyboard which is the key here so this is a little bit different so that mode changes the mod map display to a keyboard layout that you see it so you can see the actual notation which might come in handy for those that you know um, like me that need really much the keyboard it's a better graphical representation for where you are located where you what you're actually editing and how you're affecting your sound um this key mode works for any modulation source but it's particularly useful for key file sources which makes a lot of sense where specific modulation can be assigned to each of the nodes so that makes a lot of sense if you're setting some modulation for um, each node then this is going to help you know exactly when you're going to be triggering that modulation based on the key that you're pressing on the keyboard now going to snap y it's kind of the same thing you have um, uh, quantization of point levels limiting them the same as with the x values a note to make here is that the snap settings being off will let you move points freely and i'm going to show you that in a second so i'm going to turn this one off too um so off will let you move points freely and also the snap settings do not move existing point levels into alignment with quantized positions what this does is like we have seen before in other snaps you're only going to affect new positions that you're giving to the points so this affects how you're going to be moving points it does not affect points already in there so now i'm going to bring a preset here let me let's just do a concave and um 
yeah, let's leave it at that for now. And with the snap, I'm gonna go third. So I don't, I don't know. I really actually need a a better one, so I can have more points available. There you go. So you see how the snap of one eight interacts and one third. Doesn't let me do much there. Oh. So now I cannot move from here to here because that's already covered the third. Oh, we're just gonna go with off. And you see how the snapping goes in Y with that one fifth. You cannot move past um, another point. That's how pretty much that interacts. Now I modulated source C and filter two. Let's turn those off. So that's how that sounds. Now, if I turn that on, I kind of lost some of my velocity, which is not good. <laughs> well, let me go to the Which one is it? Yeah. So it's really the filter one that's giving me um, that effect. But let's change some parameters here. I promised that I was going to change more of the parameter stuff here. Another um, modulation source for the mod map. Um, what do I want to do? An envelope follower. Hmm. Let's, let's do this. Let's go here to source B. Let's add a um, add an old property held, and then let's add a LFO. Well, we have an LFO, I think, already. Do a sequencer, so a node sequencer. See if I want to deal with this uh, another one. I'm having trouble trying to add another mod map, which makes me look like a fool. <laughs> well, yeah, this is not really a modulation, like I said. So, um, anyways, uh, sorry about that. Um, wasn't the greatest example, but I promise that when I get into that sound designing. I'm gonna be using these parameters all over the modulation with much more precision and much more care so that you'll learn how to actually create different types of sounds. And with that, I'm gonna leave you for this tutorial in the next video. Finally go into the perform section and I'm just gonna give you a quick intro on that. Try to keep this video shorter as well 
whatever there's intro combine some of them try to make more sense I think I kind of getting better into doing this um, sorry if there was anything that you did not understand it's quite early in the morning it's 4 45 a.m. I'm just recording this right before I go to work just to make sure that I get caught up with everything that I have promised to give you guys so see you in the next video peace out YouTube